you guys think then? <clears throat> a lot of it seems uh, effortless, but uh, they do put a, put a lot of time into what it is that they do, and we appreciate them. Today we're going to continue on in this series uh, called When We All, and, it, and that was birthed out of that, that song, When We All Get to Heaven. What a day of rejoicing that'll be. And so when we all see Jesus, you know, and so that, that whole, and, and that was a very special song for me growing up, but it was always about that futuristic thing. It was something that, you know, just uh, the, the term I use a lot is just suffer through it. We'll just suffer through until we get to that place. And what a horrible existence that can be. You know, uh, life happens, doesn't it? Biggest, uh, biggest amen I've gotten in a while. Life happens, and and <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that this can't be a good place here. And so, and it's this whole series is talking about how do we how do we help usher in the kingdom of God right here and right now, and and that's uh, what what the church is called to do. And so, this series, what we're looking at is if. What would happen if we did certain things? What would happen if we said certain things or thought about certain things? Or uh, kind of today we're kind of talk about if we were more aware, if we were more aware of certain things. Now, I'm not talking about any specific family that is here, so go ahead and get don't get nervous when I start talking about 15-year-old Carl. All right. 15-year-old Carl, every time he, he uh, it's supper time and he shows up to the supper table, his hands are nasty. I'm not talking about a little dirty. It's nasty. His hair, I know, <laughs> Kathy's already freaking out, and the hair is going here, it's going there, it's going everywhere. He's sweaty, he's nasty. It happens every single night at supper. That's how he shows up at the table. And you know what mom says? Okay, maybe it's Carl Higgins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says it just that way too, right? Go clean up. Yeah. All right. And so, so you're not going to come to this table this way. Go wash your hands. Go... Yeah, yeah. Comb your hair. Why? I, I used to. And then, you know, do something. You can't come here to this table. Of course, next night, same thing. It's like over and over. And, and mom's like a, I don't know why it has to be mom, but it is in this story. But but she says, you know, and it's, it's, she's like a broken record, but, but he keeps coming the same way over and over, go, and he comes and go. And... Hey, Bobby. And then one night, he shows up at the table, clean as he can be. Not only is the hair combed, but it's a new hairstyle. Very stylish. Sweater, khakis he presents well mom doesn't say anything 
She doesn't have to. He sits down to eat, and Mom's just thinking. Next night, same thing, but a little bit different. This time, he's actually shaved the peach fuzz off. He's wearing cologne. He smells good. Doesn't say anything. What? She's figured out that something's going on. Carl has met a girl. Carl is in love. He's... <laughs> go back to your room. But in this case, he found love, and it changed, changed everything. It changed how he acted. It changed, this love, it changed how he reacted. It changed everything about how he walked through his day. Does anybody, does anybody know Carl? <laughs> a lot of us have seen Carl. And we're going to look at, uh, at a little bit of this story today. Uh, it's it's uh, shaped up a little bit differently, but it's in the second, second Corinthians. It's in the fifth chapter. We're going to be looking at verses 11 through 21. It's a little bit long, longer passage, but I felt like it was to get it all in context, we have to go here. And it, it starts out with, that keeps us vigilant. So I guess I need to tell you what that is. Right before that, the Apostle Paul is telling the people there in Corinth that one day they're going to be held accountable for what it is that they've done. They're going to have to come before God and be judged. Okay? So that's, that's immediately what he said right before this. So we pick up in verse 11. That keeps us vigilant. You can be sure. It's no light thing to know that we'll all one day stand in that place of judgment. That's why we work urgently with everyone we meet to get them ready to face God. God alone knows how well we do this, but I hope you realize how much and deeply we care. We're not saying this to make ourselves look good to you. you just, we just thought it would make you feel good, proud even, that we're on your side and not just nice to your face as so many people are. If I acted crazy, I did it for God. If I acted overly serious, I did it for you. Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. His love has the first and the last word in everything we do. And here's where he starts talking about the new life. Our firm decision is to work from this focus center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or, what they, or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly, don't, we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, a created one, a crea is created new. The old life is gone, a new life virgins. Look at it. All this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and him then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us a task of telling everyone what he is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ. We're, we're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How, you ask, in Christ. God put the, put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. This, this is the word of God for the people of God. See, in this, it talks about that love changes everything. This relationship with God, this love that comes, this relationship that we have with, with God 
through Jesus Christ, it changes absolutely everything. In this passage, it's all about, it's, uh, it's a passage of reconciliation, this ministry of reconciliation. Uh, one of the most beautiful, and, and you really don't pick it up in, in this translation out of the message. Uh, most of you know 2 Corinthians 5.17, right? Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. See, that's a, right? That was the one. Yeah. Check. But it is, it's about the, this relationship with Christ. When we have that, the old is gone and the new has come. See, he came and he, he, he put it all back into order. See, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and everything was perfect, everything was wonderful. And then that little thing slipped in. What do we call it? Sin. It, cre it crept in. And the whole perfect thing, it was no longer in order. It, it's out of focus. And you know what they said? I never saw that coming. Right? So things were going so well, and I never saw that thing sneak up. But in, in some of us, when we, like I said, when, when I opened up, a lot of us go through and we're just spending our time going, okay, well, it's not perfect, and so well, I'll just get through this, and then one day it's all going to be okay when we all get to heaven. But, but Christianity, this whole, this whole concept of the good news, this concept of the gospel, it's bigger and better than any of that. We don't have to wait until then. Because of this good news, we're actually called to do something. All, all through the Bible, we're, we're taught that God has maintained a connection, a relationship uh, with us uh, back in the garden. Uh, I love the scripture where it says that uh, God came, he walked in the cool of the day, not in the 100 degree temperature, but in the cool of the day. God came and he walked with Adam and Eve. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be? And then, of course, we have, we talked about it last, was it last week that we talked about it? The tabernacle and the temple? Yeah, it was last week. And so the tabernacle, you know, where they would go and they would, they, they had the connection to where the, the, the uh, priest, the high priest could go in and, and God would tell them what to do. And then that turned into the temple. And then last week we explored how Jesus had come and Jesus was the temple. And he shook that all up. But then he did that little twist that gets us all acting crazy. And we become the temple. That we are the place that, that God resides that the Holy Spirit's in us, right? No pressure. So now, through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are that place where heaven meets earth right here. We help usher in the kingdom. How are we doing? I see you mouthing it, but I don't hear it. Are we doing better? All right, so this, this whole thing that this scripture today talks about that we are Christ representatives in the world. You feel good with that? You're willing to walk around with that on the back of your shirt? How about the front of your shirt? At least if it was on the front, you could back out of a situation, you know? But this whole, this, the, this whole uh, idea of us being ambassadors of reconciliation, I don't know, I know about you, but there's sometimes that I get into a situation that I don't want to be the one. Let somebody else come and pour out forgiveness on that person. Is that just me and Charles? <laughs> yeah, but that's who we are. That's what the Scripture talks about, that we are called to be those ambassadors of, of reconciliation but the problem is and I guess it's a good problem that's not how the world operates that's not how the world sees that things should be so when you come in and you start acting as that and you start uh, acting the way that, that you're being directed to do it seems a little different and people start wondering if you're crazy they start wondering if you got a screw loose why in the world are you doing this? Or why would you act this way? Why? Some of you are 
poking one another. Are you poking the crazy people? Okay. Or, or you find yourself you're in a job for 15, uh, this is Carl, I guess, for 15 years, <laughs> and, and then you leave that job to go do something else, and, and some people would call that crazy maybe. But Paul, in this, he says, if I acted crazy, I did it for God. And if I came across too seriously, I did it for you. Now, moms, I did that for you. As you, you're, you're serious about how you're raising your children, aren't you? And, and if you come across too seriously, you're doing it for them, I hope. Now, this whole, this whole idea of, of I'm not crazy, you know, I, I'm not crazy, and Paul says this a lot, I, I, I'm not crazy. Now, some of us, we are crazy, and we're not doing it for kingdom goodness. We're acting like a different kind of crazy. We, we're, we, we don't have any sort of higher standards or anything. We're, we're, just, we're, we're just crazy. This isn't a... You know, how, how about do this? Turn to your neighbor, right or to the left, and say, I'm not crazy. All right, all right. Now, I, some of y'all are saying stuff other than I'm not crazy. But in the end, God will come and he will restore things back to order. In the end, God will come and this whole heaven and earth, and I'm not going to get into it, but if you ever want to talk about the new heaven and the new earth, it all comes together and everything's going to be put back the way that it was supposed to be in right relationship. But until then, we're called to live out our mission, our ministry. We're called to live intentionally in a Christ-like manner to bring glory to God, not to ourselves. And that's what Paul was saying. I'm not doing that. We weren't doing this to make ourselves look good or to make you look bad. We were actually trying to fulfill our mission of going out and, and some of you are thinking that we're crazy. Now, if you do something for, the, for God or a little too seriously because we're trying to bring somebody along and they look at us and they start thinking you're crazy consider yourself in good company I would love to be compared to Paul as much as he went through and he never pulled away he never pulled away from his commitment it took him a while to get there but once he was there he was there Uh, I, I shared with somebody uh, this week uh, in Acts in the 26th chapter we find there's a beautiful story there of Paul, the Apostle Paul speaking to Festus and, and during that uh, during that in, in, the, uh, in the message the translation it says no sir I'm not crazy See, so several times Paul it, it's like I don't understand why you're acting the way that you are and I don't understand the way that a lot of you act, too. I wish we could move that out from the bad crazy into the good crazy, into the Paul kind of crazy, rather than the crazy that I, that I find myself in uh, quite a bit. Now, I put out on Facebook, I, I put it out to a, a lot of you, and you know what? If I mention crazy in a Facebook post, y'all are all over that stuff. Yeah, you know, I ask about, you know, what would Jesus want you to do today? Crickets. But I ask, you know, what, what would make you think that somebody was crazy? You're like, you're, you're like chatty patty. But I'll tell you, one of the one of the one of the responses that I love the most, and y'all can get on Facebook and let him know that I quoted him today. It came from Booth Moses. What is uh oh? Uh, that was Charles Renaud. I'm looking at the camera. That was Charles. <laughs> All right, you ready? This is what this is what Booth wrote. I don't know why we have to automatically put crazy behavior into the negative category. It's almost like he knew Paul. 
Think about how much humor and joy crazy behavior brings to us every day. How we use it is what is important. It's how we use it. And, and if, we're, if we're going about being crazy, going, wash up, wash up, wash up, and it, it brings about love to happen, well, let it be. If it means that we have to go out and we have to do something that doesn't seem right, see, this whole different thing, different makes people feel threatened. That should be the motto of the Love It household right there. I'm just looking at you. I'm just looking at you. <laughs> but th- this, <laughs> you know, wh- when you start acting differently or somebody comes at me and they're being overly nice, I have to tell you, I start wondering, especially if they patted me on the back. I want to see if they put a kick me sign on the back. You know, uh, why... Is, Bill might would do that to you. You know, it, it, but why are you acting this way? I don't understand. But if we could act out in a way of, with humor and joy and reach out to people with hope and love and mercy and forgiveness, if we could do that, or we could stick with the old standard of judgment and condemnation and see how that works. How do you think, who do you think they're more apt to listen to and believe about there being a better way of life? The humor, joy, hope, or the judgment and condemnation? Thank you very much. She picked humor, joy, and hope, as, as I do as well. But when love gets a hold of us, We start coming to the table differently. When joy and hope get a hold of us, we start dressing differently. We start wrapping ourselves up in His righteousness, not in our own, going, look at me, look at me. But it's about who we're wrapped up in, what we're wrapped up in, what we're covered by. That's what it is that we're sharing with others. And you know what? We start washing up without being told. And oh, the cologne that we wear. The cologne that we wear makes us start smelling like Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I don't know of a better fragrance out there than to hug somebody and to smell Jesus all over. So are you going to be Carl? Or you'll be the one that smells like Jesus. I guess Carl in the story ended up smelling like Jesus, huh? Once you have experienced his love, it changes the way that you act, you react, the way that you get through your day. Now, is that not something to hold on to? Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone and the crazy is gone. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. We thank you so much for this opportunity for us to be able to come and become a little bit more aware of what this whole ministry of reconciliation looks like, that, that, that we truly are called to live out our life differently, that we're to be able to go out and act crazy for you, that we're supposed to act in a way that the world wouldn't expect. And sometimes we may come across too seriously, but we truly are doing it because we care, we love about people. And we want them to understand that the way to this life, this abundant life, filled with love and joy and hope, mercy and forgiveness, it comes through a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Let us be your ambassadors. Let us be your representatives. Send us out into this broken world and allow us to be those people, to speak words of life, to speak words of joy, of hope. 
Father, you know that we have the brokenness and we have those things that we, we have the crazy all on our own. Come and take those things away. Let it be all about that love that's drawing us to you. Pour it out on us so that we can go and share it with other people. We pray these things in the blessed holy name of Jesus. Amen. Today, uh, you may want to act crazy. You may... Y'all know the title of this message is Acting Crazy, right? Uh, and I would encourage you to do your next steps on the back because there's uh, at least one really hard question on there. Some of you have already spied it and you didn't like it. Didn't you? You saw it. Maybe you want to come and pray about that question that's down there. that person that's hardest to love or, or hardest to forgive, you know, and maybe you want to come and spend some time at the altar. If you don't want to be messed with, we won't mess with you. If you need some help, just raise your hand. Somebody will come pray with you. Maybe you want to come and you want to partner in ministry with us and officially be a be a member here. Uh, Miss Karen's not here, but uh, me or somebody will jump down. And, Carly, will you do it? Uh, Carly will get your information. And, um, or maybe you've never fully given yourself to a relationship with Jesus Christ and you want to come and, and, and just say, you know, I, I, I want to be a follower of Christ and uh, I would love to put some water back in that pool. Whatever your decision is, is this morning, I encourage you to come to the altar
we're gathered here in worship. Now it's time for us to go and be the church. Amen.